Yo, what's going on guys? Tanmaya for Simple Snippets and welcome back to a new video tutorial in Core Java Programming and today's topic is going to be memory management and what happens behind the scenes when a program is executing in the memory and the two different memories that is stack and heap and how they play a role when a program is executing in the memory. So we discussed about stack and heap a little bit in one of the video tutorials wherein we are talking about Java pass by value versus pass by reference. So in that video, we talked about stack and heap and how they work, but we did not explicitly cover that topic of memory management and what happens behind the scenes when a program is executing. So I thought I'll cover this entire video or entire topic in this separate video. So with that being said, let's start off with today's topic. So as you can see on the screen, on the left hand side, we have a program. So I have my class, which is a custom class created by me. Then we have the public class Java application four, which has the main method and two static methods work and more work. Okay. So we are going to see what happens when the program is executing and how is the stack and heap memory used by the JVM. So when you're starting to execute this program, we know that the starting point is the main method, right? So this is where the starting point is. Now in Java, when the programs are executing, the methods are added into the stack memory. So your program is basically going to be running in the RAM, right? So that's your main memory. And in the RAM, we have two different types of memory that is the stack and the heap. Now the stack and heap are basically concepts in data structures because they operate differently. So the operations in stack are different compared to operations in heap memory. And we'll not get into a lot of detail in the data structures, but just understand that there are two different types of memory in the RAM and JVM uses both of them depending upon what is being used in the program. So methods are usually allocated on the stack. Okay. So let's start off with the program execution. So the starting point, as I said, is going to be the main method. So you can see public static void main. So in the stack, a frame is created and you can consider frame as a area memory area in the stack. So I'm just going to mark this entire block for main method. Okay. So this entire memory area, which is considered as a frame, you can say is reserved for main method. Okay. So this is the first method, which is added into the stack. Now this entire area will have all the variables which are locally created in the main method. So let's start off with the first line. You can say int x equals to five. So in the, in this frame, which is reserved for main method, a memory block is created. It's named X and the value stored inside it is five. So it might be having some random address hash one zero zero or some binary or hexadecimal address. But for the program, the name that we've assigned is X and the value is stored as five. Okay. So this was line number one. So we're going to go line by line and we are going to see what exactly happens in the memory. So that's the whole idea of this video. Now at the second line, you can see we are calling a method work. So this is that method over here. Okay. So now the control is transferred from this method. That is the main method to the work method. So let's use another color for work. So I'm going to use pink. So now, as I mentioned, methods are added on top of stack. So this is the second method work, which is called an, a new memory area is reserved for this work method, which goes on the stack. So this is work. Now inside work, you can see we have a local variable int p equals to 15. Now we already know what are local variables, instance variables, static variables, because we've explicitly covered them separately in this entire core Java playlist. I'll link that video if you haven't seen it. So local variable means the scope of this variable is just inside this work method. So inside this frame, new memory is allocated with the value of 15 and the name of p. So p is the variable name. So holding the value of 15, the second line of this work is another method call. So you can see more work is called. So more work would be this method. So now control is transferred from the work method to more work method. And again, more work is again added on top of stack. So that's how it goes. So let me just create one more frame for more work. So this is going to be for more work. Please excuse my handwriting. It's not really great. And inside more work, we just have one variable. Q who's storing a value of 20. Again, it's a local variable which exists only inside more work. Okay. So now the execution of more work is done, right? We have only one line inside this more work method. So this is done. So once this is done, this memory is erased. So what happens is from the stack, more work is erased along with the local variable Q. And now the control is transferred back from more work to the calling method, which was work. So work was calling more work, right? So control is again given back to work. So we are on to this frame now. 
Now again, see that more work was the last statement inside work method, which means after more work, even the work method will get over. So even that is cleared from the stack. Okay. This is done. Okay. So even work is done and work was called by the main method over here. So now again, lastly, the control is given back from work to the main method to the next line. So up until now, if you've seen everything is happening inside the stack, right? Methods are put on top of stack and the local variables also are created in the stack. Now you can see that we are creating an object. You can see my class obj1 and we're not actually creating it. We're just declaring it. So this is just the declaration part. We are not yet using the new keyword and allocating it memory, right? Okay. So inside the stack, inside the frame of the main method, this obj1 is created obj1. Okay. And right now at this line, at this exact line, it does not have anything. It will have null because we are not yet used the new keyword to assign memory and to actually create the object, right? The, when we create the object, the object will have this int var one as an instance variable and we have one constructor. That's it. So it's a very simple class. So let's move on to the next line and let's see what happens. So at the next line, obj one is equal to new my class. So at this line, what is happening is now the object is actually created. So this null is erased, but objects which are of type class, okay, which are not primitive basically are always created in the heap. So this is where the heap data structure or heap memory actually comes into picture. So what happens is inside the heap. So let me use another color. So inside the heap, a memory area is created and this is created when the new uh, new keyword is used. We will have one instance variable where one inside this. And since the default constructor is called the value is assigned 10. So it is an integer variable an integer instance variable, which will hold value 10. And this is that complete object, which is created inside the heap. So what exactly is this obj1 then? So this obj1 is just a reference variable. So by the word itself, you can understand that it is going to perform or it is going to refer to the actual object, right? So exactly what is happening is this obj1 is now going to point to the actual object which is inside the heap. So this actual object location might have some address one zero one zero one zero something like that. So this obj1 is actually going to have that address one zero one zero one zero and it is going to refer the actual object in the heap. So in the stack, the object is not going to be created. So you can understand the difference here, right? In the stack, the actual object is not created. The actual object is created in the heap. Only the reference variable obj1 resides in the stack. And what it does, it refers to the actual object in the heap. So for more understanding, I have again instantiated this object. So I'm saying obj1 is equal to new my class again. So again, a new memory location is created in the heap with var1 as an instance variable value as 10 because again, default constructor is going to assign value 10. And this is another object of the same type, my class with the same name obj1. So what happens is obj1 was actually referring this object over here in the memory. Now this reference is gone and now it is referring to this object in the memory, which is at some other location. Let's say 2010, something like that. So the address again is going to change over here. It is going to say hash 20101. Okay. Something like that, which is over here. Now the reason why I again created this is because I wanted to introduce you a new term, which is known as garbage collection in Java programming. So garbage collection or garbage collector basically is a utility program, which is again comes, which comes by default with Java. When we download the entire JDK It's just an internal program, just like a compiler or interpreter. And what it does is it erases off unused memory and it deletes these unused memory allocations. So what happened at this line is we are now our reference variable obj1 is now pointing to another object, right? So this reference is broken. So now the GC that is the garbage collection or garbage collector sees that there is no point of keeping this entire object into memory, right? Because we are not going to be using this because there is no way we can use it, right? Because object one is pointing to a new object. This reference variable obj1 is pointing to a new object in the heap. So it's not going to be manipulating or using this. So now the garbage collector comes and erases off this entire object from the heap. So it clears out by default. Okay. And this is completely handled by JVM. So we do not have control over the garbage collector. 
and we'll talk about garbage collector in detail in some other video but right now just understand i just wanted to introduce the concept of garbage collection so this was basically the overall working of the memory especially the stack and heap part of the memory and what happens behind the scenes when a java program is executed and is running in the memory so i hope you guys have a clear understanding of java stack and heap memory and what happens behind the scenes when a program is executing in the memory so that's it for this video guys i hope you like this video i hope you understood the concept of when stack is used and when heap is used and how the control is flowing in the entire program and what are reference variables and that's it for this video guys if you really like this video if you really understood this concept please give it a thumbs up please give this video a thumbs up and let me know in the comments that you like this share it with your friends and if you are new on this channel make sure you subscribe to this channel there are a lot of technology oriented video tutorials and lot are coming soon so you'll get notified whenever i upload a new one thanks for watching guys i'll see you guys in the next video peace